The Vue 3 Composition API has opened new possibilities for accessing the full power of the Vue router. In addition to defining the URL structure for your app, it can improve performance by lazy loading pages and provides navigation middleware to follow code design principles like dry. Today, we'll be looking at using the Vue router with the Composition API to create a Catfax web page with full TypeScript support. By the end of this video, you will hopefully have a full understanding of how to successfully use the newly added use route and use router composition functions. We'll also look at some changes between Vue 2 and Vue 3 and some more advanced features like lazy loading routes, dynamic segments, navigation guards, and adding a 404 error page. If you're new around here, don't forget to subscribe and you can grab the full source code from the GitHub link in the description. I've already created a basic Vue 3 application and removed some of the boilerplate code. Don't forget to enable Vue Router and TypeScript when setting up your project with the CLI tool, or you can install them manually using your favorite package manager. Inspecting the project, we can see that the CLI created a router folder and a views folder. The router folder contains all the route paths and components in an array which is iterated over until the route is matched. We'll come back to this file once we have created some components and views. Below this array, you'll notice we created the router itself, and we also passed in the router array and a function called create web history. This function switches view from hash to history mode inside your browser using the HTML5 history API. For view 2 users, you probably noticed that the way the router was configured is a little different. We'll start by creating the home page, since this will be the most straightforward. All we need to do is display some welcome information and then add it to the router at the base URL. When adding it to the router, it requires a path, which is the URL where the route can be found, and a component that will be loaded when the route is called. We can also add an optional name that can be used when linking to this route. There are additional properties we'll be looking at in this tutorial, but you can find the full list of available options in the View Router docs. Next, we'll create the fact page. The URL will accept an ID parameter that will be used as an index to display a specific fact. We can access this property by calling the useRoute function, which will return a reactive object containing information about the current route. We can create a computed property from the parameter object, which accesses the ID value. All we have to do now is pass it over to our fast card, which will display the fax image and text. I've already created an array which contains text and images for each fact. The fact card will input the fax array and use the pass an ID to determine which one to display. We can also add some validation to make sure that the index is within the required range. Once we get our fact, we can display the image and the fact in the template. We can finally add the fact view to our router, and you'll notice we're using a colon to indicate the ID as a dynamic value. If we had a URL like fact slash three, this would result in the ID property being set to three, just like in view two. Instead of using the function use route, we could have opted to have dynamic segments passed into the component by props. We'll also add a router guard, so if a user enters a number that is not within the range of the array, it will redirect them to the error page. For the fact list page, we'll simply use a for loop and iterate over all the facts and display their information. When the HTML element is clicked, we'll call a function that programmatically redirects the user to the facts page. To do this, we can call the use router hook, which will return an object containing functions to manipulate the current view router instance. We can call the push function and pass it an object telling it where we would like it to go. We could have simply used a router link to redirect the user to the location, but I want to take a look at how we could do this programmatically. We will take a look at using the router link component when we create the navigation links. We can finally add this view to the router and it requires no special conditions. For the navbar, we'll need to create two components. The header link, which uses the route link component to redirect the user to the URL when clicked. The slot is simply used to render any nested HTML inside the component. It will also apply a special class when the current URL path is active. The header will contain our header links. We could place the header inside each component, but this would be extremely repetitive. Instead, we can add the component outside of the router view so it always renders on every page. Lastly, we'll need to tell our router what to do when it doesn't match any routes. The way we do this is a little different in view 3. If we haven't found a component by the end, this means the page is not found and we can add a custom 404 page component here. 
We can do this by using the catch all and regular expression in the dynamic segment, which will always return true for any URL. And we are done. We have successfully created an application using Vue Router in Vue 3. I hope you gain an understanding about how to create applications in Vue. If you like this content, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and smash that thumbs up button.